Want to start a glam site but don't know where to begin? First, you have to learn what is going to be allowed by your local government. I'll show you how. I've been a federal regulator for over 10 years, so I know my way around some legal language and a poorly designed government website, which can often be confusing. And glam sites, whether you're putting up off-grid tents or you're building tiny cabins, touch various aspects of the law. This can include zoning, permitting, building codes, health codes, and there may be others. And this can vary by location, but there should be some commonalities, and that's what I'm going to focus on in today's video. The three questions are, where can you build a glamp site? What kind of permits do you need to put up a glamp site? And what requirements do you need to get those permits? So let's get started. Where can you build a glamping site? Most areas in the United States, and frankly, most parts of the globe, have created laws to control how land is used, determining what activities can and cannot happen in certain areas. These are commonly called zoning laws. Examples include a residential zone where homes can be built, a commercial zone where businesses can be, and an agricultural zone where farms can be located. Some areas allow mixed use zoning, meaning in a singular area, you can have different types of activities such as farming and commercial businesses all happen in that same area. In order to find out what zones exist in your locality, you're going to want to go to your county or other local government website and search for two things. The first is the zoning use table. This table is going to list all of the different zones that exist in your area and what types of activities are allowed to happen in those areas by right, meaning you don't need a permit, and that are allowed by permit. The second thing that you are gonna want to search for is the zoning map. And this is going to show you using a map where all of the different zones exist in your area. And what you're gonna wanna look for on your zoning use table is a few things. One, you're gonna want to look for the type of use that is gonna be the closest to a glamping site. In all likelihood, this is going to be a campsite. So search to see if a campsite is a specific use that is zoned in your area. Then you're gonna wanna see if there are any other types of businesses that are kind of like a glamp site to see if those are within your zoning use table. For example, you could look for a bed and breakfast. You could also look for a hotel or a motel. So a campsite, hotel, motel, and bed and breakfast are all kind of combined in what is commonly called a glamp site. So if your county does have those uses, in all likelihood, you may be able to put up a glamp site in your area. So congrats. Now, in all likelihood, a campsite or a glamping site is not going to be permitted to exist in all types of zones. It's only going to be allowed to exist in certain zones. Now, which zones? That is the million dollar question that you're gonna wanna answer. In my particular county, and I think in most counties in the United States, that zone is going to be the agricultural zone where typically farms and other agricultural land exists. Okay, now that we've answered the first question, let's go on to the second question, which is, what permits do you need in order to be able to put up a glamping site? Okay, so most of the time, any business is going to need special permission from the local government in order to be able to operate. This isn't unique to glamp sites, but what is unique to glamp sites is the type of business that it is. A glamping site is going to host paying guests who are staying overnight and perhaps participating in some activities on the land. And because they are staying overnight, they are going to be accessing dwellings. And in all likelihood, those dwellings are gonna to have to meet certain requirements. And because a glamping site is hosting guests and whenever people congregate, it's always possible for emergencies to arise. Applicable requirements are likely going to extend to the health and safety of your guests. So you're gonna to have to meet those requirements. And then any requirements related to guests staying overnight that may apply to a hotel or motel or a bed and breakfast, those are likely going to apply to a glamping site. So what that means is it's very likely that in your county, in your local area, you are going to need to get permission 
from the county in order to run a glamping site. You're not just gonna be able to put one up. And if you do that, be very careful because if you get reported and get caught, you could get a cease and desist order from your county shutting down your business overnight. And before I get into the third point, please hit like if you found the content in this video valuable and subscribe for more content like this. Now I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty of what it takes to be approved to put up a glamping site. And I'm gonna use my county as an example. In order to get approved to put up a glamping site, you're likely going to have to get permission in four different areas. Yes, I said four. And if you haven't already guessed, getting the permits and all of the proper permission to put up a glamping site is going to take some time. I would expect after you already have the land and the land has met all of the requirements that you need to be able to put up a glam site, it's going to take you at least two years to have your glamping sites up and running with all of the proper permissions. But remember, if you are patient and you get all of the proper permissions, you are going to have a business that is going to be worth money because not everyone is willing to go through what it takes in order to get all of the permission required for a glamping site. So this is gonna weed out a lot of your competition. So if you're able to stick with it, you will have a really valuable business that you can run in perpetuity and it's not going to get shut down by anyone because you have the right to run it. So let's get into that example. Okay, so I'm now on my county's zoning use table and I'm going to start by searching for the word camp and I can see that just running the search function that there are three mentions of the word camp. Campground is probably not what I'm looking for because in my case I want to build small tiny cabins and not have soft-sided structures because for me I want to be able to run year-round and it's cold where I live and soft-sided tents I, I just wouldn't be able to run throughout the winter because it does get cold enough to freeze so I wouldn't be able to host guests for at least three months out of the year and I don't want that but here in my zoning use table the very next type of use category is called the rustic retreat slash camp slash outdoor club and that's exactly what I want. And you can see here on this zoning use table that it says E for RC and E for A. Now the RC, A, R1, R2, those are the actual zoning districts. I happen to know that RC refers to resource conservation, A refers to agriculture, the Rs refer to residential. I'm not gonna go through the rest because you cannot put up a rustic retreat in any of those. So if I scroll up, on this zoning use table, the letter E refers to the principal permitted use as a special exception with site development plan approval. That means that I need to have a site plan and it has to be approved by whatever body the county has determined. And I will do that through the special exception permit process. That's all that that's saying. All right, so I already know that I need a special use permit. Well, what other permits do I need? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to further look up and I'm really gonna pay attention to these letters here. So letter A is just saying the only people that can apply are the ones who have a financial interest in whatever the business is. The next letter is pretty important because it's saying that granting the, the permit is, is really a matter of development policy, meaning they want to use this permit process to filter out the types of development they want and they don't want. So just because you apply for the permit does not mean you will be granted that permit. That's a really important point. To pay attention to and they essentially tell you what they're going to be looking for they want to make sure that your proposed business is going to be consistent with the comprehensive development plan of the county so perhaps you'll want to set aside some time to look that up and read it and see where the county wants to take its overall development and see how you can fit in and in fact use some of their own language in your permit application to show that you are going to be in harmony with where the county wants to go. Then they're looking at 
the nature and consistency intensity of the operations and where it's located. So if your proposed glamping site is going to be in a really quiet area that's really spread out, they are not gonna want you to build something dense and loud. They're gonna want you to build something that is really going to fit in with where it's going to be located. So I'm not gonna go through all of these, but be sure to pay attention to what they're saying they want when it comes to considering a special exception or special use permit, whatever it is called in your area. And you're going to want to use their language back at them to show that you're paying attention. Okay, so we've talked about the special use or the special exception permit. The other types of permission that you are going to need is making sure that you meet the definition of the use. So if I go back to my code here and I look at the definition of a rustic retreat, you'll see that there are seven, eight, nine, like 10 or 11 enumerated items here. Very important things to pay attention to. A minimum 10 acre lot size is required. If you have a really high capacity, there are gonna be some setback requirements of how far back the buildings must be from wherever the road or other boundary is. Maximum density, so you can only have a maximum density of three people per acre. Impervious surface, so they don't want too much roof line. They don't want too much concrete or asphalt. They want to maintain as much of the natural ground as possible. And then other requirements. So you're going to have to meet the definition of that use. So. So far we've talked about two kinds. Then your site plan is going to have to meet any applicable environmental or health codes. And I highly recommend that you are working with a local licensed engineer who's going to be familiar with the state as well as local code requirements and they're gonna be able to craft a site plan that is gonna be consistent with that. And then fourth and finally, all of your structures and decking is going to have to meet the building code requirement. You're also going to have to apply for a building code after you receive the special use or the special exception permit. And it's only once you have all of those things approved, you have your site plan approved, you have the special exception permit, and then any other permission you need, then you'll get that building permit. Once you have that, then you can actually break ground and construct your glamping site. So the final tip that I'm going to leave you with, I want you to go to your local government's website and run a search for a few terms. One, site plan requirements, and read it. Two, the special use permit application. Three, your building permit. And then finally, your county's comprehensive plan. Read all of those documents and become familiar with what's going to be required and where the county wants to go and grow. And that should really equip you to take the next steps in order to build your glamping site. If you wanna become an Airbnb host, my link is down below. You'll earn $75 after you host your first guest. And if you want any links to the items that I use to furnish and decorate all of my Airbnbs, those are down below in a completely free shopping list. I hope today's video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.